So, Professor Jagdish Bhagwati, thanks very much uh, for joining us and being at the conference today. Now, I know that you addressed the conference. You were the first speech of the day. What was it that you said to conference? Oh, I was really discussing <coughs> the, mainly the need for product productivity increase uh, as a way of uh, meeting the current situation, which is one of increasing demand. In 92, we had a crisis rather similar, but very different in, in its nature, because three harvests had failed uh, in India, China, and Russia. And so food prices increased dramatically. At that time, every, you know, the, 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 the main reaction was that it would pass eventually, because good harvests always follow bad harvests. But this time around, the food prices increased dramatically. Uh, and people had to act, you know, to, to deal with the current situation, but it done so because of increases in demand, which are a long-run phenomenon. So we really have to respond to that, and I, I think in that context I was pointing out that the, the only way to do it is to increase supply, and therefore we were looking at the European agricultural policy, technological policy in terms of innovation, new seeds, the, the genetically modified uh, seeds in particular, all the issues which arise from all of those factors, because there are a whole lot of the NGO opposition to some of these things. Uh, Europe also has uh, a long-standing uh, yes. CAP policy. Yes. So I think, you know, I was still trying to put that into a systematic yes. framework as to how to set about thinking about European policy in the context of all this. And then you joined the, the Youth Forum, the first time that students have been invited to a, a forum here and sat on that panel. And uh, We polled them at the end of that, that session and we asked, you know, what are the single most important priorities? And, and they said subsidies are still important, but they said innovation, access to innovation is essential. That was really heartwarming in the sense that I think if we stifle innovation, uh, it's going to mean that you know, over time, food prices will increase even more. Maybe for producers it's okay, but it's just going to really upset ev everything. And particularly, I think, uh, if EU does not modify its policy on genetically modified product, then the developing countries, particularly the African ones, which are counting on additional exports and so on, into European Union, would not be able to implement these technologies. So, so all the opening of our markets would be meaningless for countries which cannot actually use the productivity enhancing techniques like GM products to be able to access our markets which we are opening. So we'll have an open door but nobody coming through. So in fact we are hurting the, the African countries which badly need to be able to get into the markets which we have been opening here in, in, in Europe. Technology is important, isn't it? Because you know we can produce the food, but we've got to do it in a way that is sustainable and in a way that is climate yeah. friendly. Exactly, and I think this is something which we, you know, I think GM, GM seeds are the best game in town. And, uh, you know, there's so much science behind it by now. That there is a lot of science, and yet there's still huge skepticism. You know, there's a bunch of Eurosceptics. We're sitting in the heart of Brussels, and they're here, aren't but they? But that, that's basically a European affliction, in my opinion. You go to the United States, and nobody cares about this particularly. Uh, Hormone-fed beef went through without much difficulty. Um, GM foods are going through. Um, and I don't think it's because they think GM is the is, is Detroit, uh, the car. But maybe that helps, I don't know. I mean, it's yes, maybe the familiarity it's helps. Too, it's too big to fail. <laughs> so. But maybe forums like today start this conversation that, that mean that, that you know, trust and having the dialogue gets built up. Yeah, and I think having a lot of people, including people like me from, from India and so on, essentially, talk about these things as being important. Uh, it's probably helpful, and the more dialogue we have, the, the better it is. And I think that that's really where I, I think the, this particular forum has been, I mean, I found it very interesting. I was going to ask you, are you optimistic about the, the future finally? So, you know, you, you, you have spoken here today, you've heard some of the, the, the students speak to you. Right. Are you optimistic about the yes, future? Yes, because I think it's the young people who really matter. I mean, not, I mean, I'm 76, and you know, what I, think matters to me but 
and hopefully to a few other people. And you know, I, I bring some sort of, you know, you know, a, a long experience over 50 but years. Pass on that wisdom to a, a new generation. Yes, exactly, because you know what you do get is a different perspective on these issues. Because I've seen so many issues unfold, and I know the div one advantage of being having come from India to to to, to the West and working in New New York is basically that um, I can see the problems from the other side as well. Many of the people in in the in the U.S., for example, I have no clue about, you know, anything at all. And I often say that the Europeans, in some sense, are, are better at comprehending, you know, how people elsewhere will feel, because you know you have to have ruled a country uh, to be able to really, you know, you know, feel with it. I mean, you may hate it, you may love it, but at least there is a passion and involvement. And Americans have never had an empire. You know, so it's really, you know, they've, they've liberated countries or they've unsettled governments, which is empire through CIA. <laughs> so Europe is the better example <laughs> where they've done it through liberation. You say you've seen it through, through on both sides of the fence, that so you helps. have that to that pass That helps, on. exactly. And so, so I think this is why I see the, you know, I've been through the green, first green revolution, I've been through the food crisis in 92, I've been through this. So even though I'm not really an expert in the sense of knowing every little detail of the subject, which can actually clutter up your mind, <laughs> so you, that helps me bring a perspective on the problem. And I think this is something the young people don't have. So they're looking, for, I mean, they have passion, enthusiasm, they want to change the world but they don't quite know how, you know, because that's something you get with, you know, with, with growing up. And, but by, what is encouraging is, is how, I mean, and this youth forum in particular was, had so many kids who were really quite interested in the issues and they wanted to worry about, you know, GM foods and so on. I was very impressed, actually. Well, thank you for sharing your wisdom with the conference today. Thank you.